Chapter 11, Liquid, Solids, and Intermolecular Forces. This first little section, water, no gravity. So this is a picture taken from, uh, I believe, on the International Space Station. So here's an astronaut, and there's this big drop of water. And it's cool how they took the picture, and you can see his face upside down in there because uh, the spherical things do that. They invert the image. So what is going on here? How can you have this giant drop of water? Well, in the space station, there's no gravity, right? So let's watch this video. I think it's pretty interesting. The question is, if you get a clot dripping wet without gravity and you wring it out, what's going to happen? What will happen to a run out clot? So, and I had to use equipment that was here on board the space station. We might have the coolest washcloths ever here on the space station. I'm going to show you. Here's one of our washcloths. And it's packed it. It's put down into this little tiny hockey puck so that uh, it saves space. But when you open up a hockey puck, you can't save space in space. And you pull out your washcloth. This is the one I'm going to use for the experiment today. So when you open up your hockey puck and turn it into a washcloth, it was compressed in a great big vise somewhere. Okay, so here's my washcloth, like a magic trick. And now I'm going to get this soaking wet, and then we're going to see what will happen when we wring it out. I like how those things just stay there, they're kind of floating around. Mary Kukendra <laughs> suggested that I dip this in a bag, but bags don't hold water in space. So instead, I fill the water bag. This has drinking water in it. And I'm going to uh, squirt a bunch of water into this washcloth. <laughs> okay, so here's a soaking wet washcloth. Get the microphone so you can hear me while I'm talking. And now let's, let's start wringing it out. It's really wet. And that doesn't happen on Earth. Okay, so the experiment worked beautifully, and the answer to the question is, the water squeezes out of the cloth, and then because of the surface tension of the water, it, um, it actually runs along the surface of the cloth, and then up into my hand, almost like you had jello on your hands, or gel on your hand, and it'll just stay there. Wonderful moisturizer on my hands. And the cloth doesn't really unravel itself. It just stays there floating like a, uh, like a dog's chew toy, soaking wet. Great experiment, worked perfectly. Meredith and Kendra, congratulations, great idea. Canada. Canada. So that was a video they made in response to a question sent in by some students. Um, resulted in an awesome video for my purposes. I don't know why that one's up next. So, weird, huh? What happens when you wring out a cloth here on Earth where the rest of us are? The water falls out, right? It might run down your arm, but it's just going to fall. So how does water do that? Why does it stick together as a big droplet here? Um, we're going to look at that. It has to do with the forces that attract the molecules together. These are called intermolecular forces. The prefix inter means between. 
So these are forces between molecules. We've spent some time talking about bonds, chemical bonds, probably more than you wished. Um, but now we're going to look at the forces between molecules. These are significant only at very short distances. They are responsible for the very existence of liquids and solids. Why is the bench top solid? Why is water a liquid at room temperature? It's not chemically bonded all the way through. Liquids have movement of particles. What's holding the particles together? It's these intermolecular forces. These forces um, play a big part in many physiological processes, things that are occurring in your body that sustain life. So what state a particular sample of matter is in has to do with the relative strength of the intermolecular forces compared to the amount of thermal energy. Remember, thermal energy is a form of kinetic energy. It's the movement of the individual particles. So even in a solid, the particles are moving. They're just vibrating. They're not moving past each other. So maybe people sitting on a subway train, they're fixed relative to each other. They're, they're wiggling in their seats, even if the train isn't moving, um, but they're not moving past each other. But they get out on the sidewalk in a crowded city, and they're milling about. Now it's a liquid. They're still close together, right? But they're free to move relative to each other. So that's liquid versus solid. 